Brilliant, we are live. Um, hello everyone on Facebook uh, or YouTube, wherever you're watching this, if it's live or if it's pre-recorded and you're watching it back. Welcome to the Doctor's Kitchen. It is 6 p.m. Wednesday. This is the penultimate live cooking uh, demonstration I'm gonna do. Uh, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to wrap it up tomorrow, um, but this, this week is all about five ingredient meals that hit that three, two, one formula. Sing it with me. Three portions of fruit and vegetables, two servings, all using one pan. You can make stews, curries, casseroles, tray bakes, stir fries, you name it. You can make it with a three, two, one formula and it looks after your health via a number of different ways. In the book, I talk about things like uh, the antioxidant potential of fruits and vegetables, but also the inflammation balancing effects, the impact on sugar, the impact on your microbiota, the phytonutrient content of fruits and vegetables, why those are so healthy for you, as well as on the podcast where you can get all of that information and more for free. So this is something that I'm super passionate about. Uh, yes, I still work in the NHS. Yes, I've been a doctor for about 12 years now, but food is the solution to what we see so much uh, of in, in you know our day-to-day -day lives. So it's really, really important to look after your health using food. I'm gonna um, be on Facebook uh, so I can see your comments. Um, so any comments you have, let us know where you're cooking from. If you're cooking along, please do tell me. This, honestly, I'm just gonna turn my pan on to a medium medium to low heat, um, as I always do, because I'm using extra virgin olive oil. And extra virgin olive oil is a fantastic oil to use. I got a question about that yesterday as to whether it's uh, healthy or not to use it. Absolutely, it's a staple of the Mediterranean diet. People cook with it, people dress with it, people drink it. Um, as long as you're not taking it to a very high temperature uh, beyond the 170 or 180 degrees centigrade, which is the smoking point, it is safe to use. Beyond that temperature, you will destroy some of the polyphenols and the bonds and the flavor becomes a lot more acrid as well. So from a culinary point of view and a, uh, a health point of view, you want to keep it around that low to medium heat um, for sure. So great, I can see myself here and some comments are coming through. Uh, let me see if I can expand this and maybe answer a few. Uh, great, Annette's here, Diane, brilliant. Um, oh, Diane made uh, one of the dishes from my book today. Fantastic, that's what I love to hear. Amazing, amazing stuff. Um, what are my views on corn? Oh, let's get on to that actually. So I was actually asked about this. Oh, Inga from Virginia, brilliant. Great to see you, uh, um, uh, Inga. Um, so I was actually asked about uh, corn and vegan processed products um, a couple of times this week. So my perspective on vegan processed products, you know, like a faux lamb or a faux kebab or whatever, um, a lot of these ingredients depends on what they've actually put into it. So a lot of them have tons of additives, emulsifiers, uh, you know, lists of ingredients that make it fairly unhealthy. Um, they, might, they might have even taken a lot of those ingredients and processed them from across the world and put it into a product, so it might not even be environmentally friendly. Um, so you've got to be careful of those, and they can be quite irritant to the gut. The other side to that is that, you know, if you are plant-based for whatever reason, ethical or otherwise, and you want a day off, you want to enjoy something that reminds you of your favorite takeout, then yeah, fantastic. They're a great option for people uh, and something that, you know, I wouldn't have an issue with. Um, but I wouldn't, just because something is vegan or plant-based doesn't necessarily make it healthy automatically. Uh, and so, you know, I prefer people eat whole foods, lots of plants, lots of color, all the things that I always talk about and quality fats as well. So for things like corn and, and all that kind of stuff, I, I'm not a big fan of. But I appreciate that when you're trying to make something, you know, like your favorite kebab or whatever, then it, it's great for those purposes. So let me walk you through, um, talk you through the recipe that we're doing tonight. Again, five ingredient recipe. So Russ El Hanout uh, chickpea stew. Very, very simple, barely any cooking. I'm using courgette, some coriander. We're gonna be using the stalks as well as the, uh, the um, the leaves. I've got Russell Hanu. Russell Hanu, for those of you who don't know, is like a North African blend. Um, it's got cinnamon, cumin, a bit of heat to it as well. If you don't have Russell Hanu, you could use Berber. You could use um, even like um, to make it completely different. You could use garam masala with a bit more cinnamon. 
powder, you know, any way which you can mimic sort of those flavors. But this you want to use quite a bit of um, because it's the only flavor base as this is a five ingredient recipe. Uh, I'm using a can of chickpeas that I've just uh, rinsed and uh, drained and a can of chopped tomatoes, although you could use fresh tomatoes as well. Uh, and we're using that three, two, one approach. So you're getting three portions of fruit and veggies per person. There's two servings in this recipe and it's going to be using one pound, of course. Okay, cool. Uh, no worries, Margaret. M many thanks for the question. Appreciate it. I'm going to get this cooking now. Um, but it's so lovely to see so many. Someone from Luxembourg. Uh, brilliant. Thank you so much for, for joining. Um, Sandra, I know Rustel Hindu is one of my favorite spice blends. And uh, Chrissy's back uh, from Worcestershire. Lovely to see you guys. I'm actually going to miss these live sessions. It's lovely seeing so many people here. And if you know you are enjoying it, um, please do share these sessions with your friends and family and loved ones who want to take control of their cooking. Um, this is definitely a recipe I think anyone can make. So we want our pan on low to medium heat. We're going to go in with uh, extra virgin olive oil, good quality cold pressed olive oil. I am doing a podcast I've been talking about for a little while now, uh, all on olive oil and why you can and should cook with it at low to medium temperatures. So um, watch out for that. I'll be coming with a fellow doctor friend of mine. With the courgette, I'm just gonna cube it. So cut it lengthways uh, along the courgette uh, and then put it flat down so it's easier to chop and then three lines through it. So you're, you've got like three strips here and then that way you just stack them up and you can, oh, Chop across using your paring knife or chef's knife. I should have used a chef's knife. I've got a small paring knife today. Um, and that way you've got your cubes. And these are three centimeter cubes or so. Super easy. If you didn't want to use courgette, you want to do something different, you could use something like aubergine. Aubergine would work really well. You need to cook it for a little bit longer than courgette. Courgette is quite easy to cook with. You want to cook with your ears. So when I'm putting that into the pan, I'm hearing the sizzle, and in a moment, I'm gonna smell the caramelization of the courgette. And I'm using quite a wide base pan today because I want as much contact with the, um, the courgette uh, on, the, on the bottom of the pan for the heat source as much as possible. I'm gonna add a tiny bit more extra virgin olive oil. As you know that I'm a big fan of, of good quality fats, so it's super important to use that. Um, and it's gonna caramelize the uh, courgette slightly as well. A uh, little bit of seasoning, pinch of salt, let it and often, and uh, black pepper. And then the Russell Hanout I'm gonna add after these have had a chance to just get a little bit more caramelization on the, um, on the outside. And that'll take about two or three minutes or so. Uh, cool, and I'll have a look at any questions that we've got here too. Put that on. All right, uh, would butter beans be a good swap with chickpeas? Absolutely, you could totally do butter beans instead of chickpeas. Any beans whatsoever would work really well with this as long as they're cooked. You could even use lentils. I think a more robust legume would be better because you, wanna, you want something that has a bit more sort of body to it so it doesn't get lost in the courgette. But absolutely, that would be really cool to use. Um, Tara from South London, hello. Uh, oh, and Pick from Devon is watching and learning. Appreciate it. Any questions you have, just shoot them. Uh, no problem. Oh, uh, Abby uh, Boxer was uh, listening to one of my gut health podcasts. I love. You'll come across me talking about gut health and the microbiota in most of the podcasts because it's such a fascinating area of nutritional medicine that we need to be a lot more sort of educated on and vocal about because it's such an important part of our physiology. This is the only bit that goes into the compost bin. Um, so yeah, so you'll, you'll hear me mention the gut microbiota and um, the, uh, the, the need to nurture your microbes. And if you think about that through the perspective of what we are cooking here today, we have variety. We've got our courgettes, we've got our chickpeas that are providing fiber. We've also got the stems of the coriander stalks here that again are providing more fiber and flavor. You're getting polyphenols from the tomatoes. You're getting some concentrated nutrients from the Russell Hanou blend. You're getting a good quality olive oil here, fats as well. These are all things that nurture and help our microbiota thrive. So 
really appreciate that. Um, oh, Angela from West Midlands is brilliant. Using aubergine, the way it would work would be to cook it for a little bit longer than I'm cooking here, so I don't know if you can see that, but I'm getting a bit of colour. Just trying to flip so you can actually see one of the courgettes. I'm getting a bit of colour here that you can see. Um, it's a little bit caramelised, but another minute or so and that'll be fine. Uh, oh, Jamie, you've learned so much. I'm so gra so grateful. I'm so grateful that you're learning and you're feeling healthy already. I got a private message from someone saying they've been cooking along for like the last three weeks and they felt lighter, they felt more energetic. Um, they asked me a specific question. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I remember thinking, you know, absolutely, you can feel healthier, uh, symptoms can dissipate, um, you can improve existing medical issues. I'm not saying that it would happen for everyone, but certainly if you give yourself the best foundation for health, which is nutrition, then a lot of things can happen, as is my own experience, as is the experience of a lot of my patients as well. So we're going to go in with the Rust Hell Hanout. This is actually um, a blend that I've made myself. The uh, blend for my Rust El Hanout is in my second book, Eat to Be Illness, um, which, yeah, I absolutely I love that book. And, you know, we've, we've done a lot of research for that as well. There's like 300 references in it. But uh, yeah, uh, I mean, Russell Hanu is a, a very easily found spice blend that you can find in, um, in stores and, and wherever as well. Straight away, the flavor of this comes through and everything is about flavor as well as function. Tiny pinch of salt. Have another quick look. Oh, I want to flavor the, the uh, chickpeas as well. So I want to make sure that I'm not putting any water in here. Just give that a good stir. You want the chickpeas to take on that flavor as well. Yeah, you know, sometimes I have three ingredient meals where it would literally be like chickpeas, a blend like harissa and some courgette, and I'd have that on its own or with a little bit of yogurt, a little bit of sumac, maybe some whole grain bread, something like that. Like, uh, sometimes my diet is very, very simple, um, but it's just wholesome ingredients as much as possible. Um, are the canned tomatoes full of salt? No, these are 100% tomatoes that have just been blended and nothing else. So, no, no extra salt there. Um, if you, oh, this is a very important question. Lisa asks, if you use garam masala and cinnamon, what ratio would you use? So I would use two teaspoons of garam masala and a half teaspoon of cinnamon, because the cinnamon can be quite overpowering. So two teaspoons of garam masala and half a teaspoon of cinnamon. That, that's the rough ratio I would go. I'm using about three teaspoons of the Russell and Newton in this one. In go the coriander stalks. Don't throw away the stalks, people. Stalks are super important, lots of fiber, and uh, extra flavor as well. It's gonna permeate through the whole dish here. So make sure you're getting chickpeas sort of a little bit crispy as well. Or just getting the, the flavor on it. Uh, Miriam from Paisley, brilliant. Uh, Inga asks if it's like zucchini. Yeah, so basically a courgette is zucchini uh, in, a, in American or even Australian as well. Uh, Tracy from Kent, thank you so much. Uh, Abby, you went to three supermarkets and you couldn't find courgette. Oh no, that's annoying. I, I managed to find one and you'll be able to get it in veggie boxes as well. Um, what other alternatives could you, oh, leeks, you could use leeks very easily, so I should have said that in the alternatives, but yeah. Anne from Belfast, thank you. Fred from Northern Atari again, thank you very much. Uh, Fred, it's lovely having such a diverse audience of people from around the world. Okay, so I'll let you see what that looks like here. This is, so you can see that. The chickpeas have got lovely colour on them, the courgettes are looking brilliant. I'm going to add the tomatoes. You can use like fresh tomatoes if you wanted as well, but the canned tomatoes do well. I'm going to add a tiny bit of water and then we're going to cover it and let it stew just to swirl around the can. Make sure you're getting a bit of liquid in there. Stir this around. And then straight away, as soon as you add the liquid, the tomato, the, the sort of sauteing or the frying stops. 
almost immediately. It's kind of like you stop the cooking process right there. And it's still cooking, but you know, you, you, you calm it down. Tiny pinch of salt, make sure it's on a medium heat. And my lid is on here, and this will take about five minutes just to make sure that the flavor's infused. Remember, we're using pre-cooked lentils, uh, uh, chickpeas, so there's no real need to you know, cook them through or overcook them. You don't want to overcook them. Um, and during that five minutes, five to ten minutes of, uh, of cooking, I would just prep my coriander leaves like I'm about to do now and clean down my kitchen. And this is exactly what you can be doing. So if, you know, cooking healthily using a 3 to one pr approach doesn't need to be difficult, it doesn't need to be you know, complicated or anything. It's very, very simple. So uh, uh, let's see, uh, what would I serve with this? So I actually think a lot of the meals that I'm creating here are nutritionally replete, so you don't need to serve it with anything. If I could suggest anything, with this I would add whole grain couscous or even giant couscous, which is fantastic. If you've got issues with uh, wheat, then a, a gluten-free bread or gluten-free grain, something like amaranth or uh, red rice or even whole grain rice, but just a small amount. You don't actually need much more because you have plant-based protein, you have fiber, you have a um, variety of, of colors here. It's quite filling because of the the chickpeas as well. Uh, cool, let's go. Uh, oh, you had a little bit of celery stick, so you added that as well. D go for it. You know, I think cooking celery is such a better way of eating celery rather than putting it into a salad raw. Um, so cooking it, even in this, like in place of the courgette, would still keep a little bit of bite. So I think celery is a fantastic idea. Um, yeah. <laughs> Still, I'm using the same paring knife as you. Yeah, I know, I love paring knives, they're great. Really cool. Uh, substitute other vegetables. Yeah, so like leeks would work very well. Um, pumpkin could, or squash could work well, but you'd need to cook it for a little bit longer. Uh, you could still do it in exactly the same way. The only difference I would do is add a little bit extra water, like I did with the tomato can here, a little bit extra water and simmer it for slightly longer as well. So if you're using something like a butternut squash, it would take around 15 to 20 minutes to fully cook through and make sure you chop it into cubes that are fairly small, so two to three centimeters, and you'll probably get a good, um, a, a good sort of uh, a, you know, ability to, to cook it through. Um, brilliant. Uh, oh, you put it in your cauliflower soup, fantastic. That's great. So I'm, I'm really behind on the comments here. Um, Sukhbe is the first time watching me live. You listen to a lot of my podcasts. Thank you very much, Ronnie. Appreciate that. Uh, Linda from Cranwell, Lincoln. Uh, oh, thank you so much. Yeah, no, I try and put as much detail as possible in terms of the foods and how they blend together for people. So if you want more information, listen to the podcast or pick up a copy of the book, 321. But even if you don't ever buy a book of mine, I just want people to know the, the sort of formula for healthy eating, it's three, two, one, three portions of fruit and veg, two servings per recipe, all using one pan. But also the principles, which are plant-focused, fiber, lots of color, lots of variety, um, quality fats, uh, as well as um, uh, making sure you, you're getting a diverse diet in as well. Super, super important. Uh, you're making the, oh, Trace has made the peach and cardamom baked oats. You don't like the hazelnuts, what is the best nut to use? Uh, oh, and you like the red bean juretsi. Uh, again, another very simple dish like this where you just literally bung everything into a pan. Um, so if you don't like hazelnuts, you could use any sort of nut that you like. So flaked almonds could be a choice. Um, you could just use some extra hemp seeds, shelled hemp seeds. Um, another option could be pistachio. Actually, pistachio would be wicked because it's got that beautiful vibrant green that would go really nice against the peach. So. Try those, uh, but any, any nut will do, absolutely any nut. Uh, maybe not peanuts, a bit, bit too savoury. Um, thanks a lot, Angela, appreciate it. Charlotte from Stratford upon Avon, brilliant. Can you get my books in hardbacks? Anna asks, uh, no, I don't think so, apart from if you're in America and you can buy the Eat to Be Illness uh, book that has a hardcover, but that's the only book I have in hardcover, unfortunately. Um, put the lid down, you're worried that I'm gonna slice my arm. <laughs> oh, the tin lids, they're over there, don't worry. They're, I think that was probably from before. Uh, brilliant, great, great, great. Uh, oh, I made, um, 
On the podcast today, I made a quick bread using oats and flaxseed. So if you want a brilliant gluten-free bread recipe, if you Google life-changing bread, uh, I forget the originator of the recipe, but it comes up on the Google, on the Google search, life-changing bread. It's made of oats, chia, uh, a bunch of nuts, psyllium husk. It's super high in fiber. And it holds better than any gluten-free bread I've ever tried before. Um, and it's so tasty when you toast it. So do look up that bread recipe. It's called Life Changing Bread. It's fantastic. So yeah. Uh, George says he's getting a lot of root veg from the veg box at the moment. What sorts of ingredients and nutrients should I be using if you want to balance your meals? Use a 3 to one approach, my friend. <laughs> Three portions of fruit and vegetables, two servings per one pound. You know, uh, you know, getting color, getting quality fats, getting fiber, it's kind of what I've got here. So you've got a colorful veg in tomato, you've got a legume in the way of chickpea, and I'm using courgette as my green. So always thinking of like getting different colors, getting your fiber rich ingredients, your plant-based proteins. That is the easiest way to maintain a nutritionally replete diet as well. So. Think about that, and uh, I, there's a whole bunch of content I put out there on free for the podcast as well. So appreciate it. Uh, figs would definitely work in this. So if you have a penchant for like you know those kind of sweet savory foods, I would definitely use uh, dried figs in this, dried apricot, uh, a little bit extra chili that would really make it sing. Um, so you you're balancing the sweet and and chili. It's always good, you know, even in Malaysian food they always balance sweet. Sweet, sour, sweet, chili, it's, yeah, um, great. Another one of my recipes, uh, Claire saying is bubbling away in the family, keep walking and say it smells amazing, thank you very much, appreciate that. It's definitely your recipe now. Um, Tracy, how on earth do I manage to do this and teach people and have a day job? I know, it's kind of weird. I won't be able to do this in early February because uh, my shifts are gonna be late shifts in the hospital, so unfortunately uh, I won't be able to do it early February, but I will try and do more lives like these because I, I genuinely enjoy them and it's great to have the interaction with you guys as well. Um, I'm really sorry, but I'm, I'm inundated with comments so I can't uh, actually get back to them all. Uh, oh, yes, my thrifty cooking series. If you are interested in recipes that don't break the budget, kind of like this one here, but are you know nutritionally replete, they are culturally relevant and respective, do check out that if you're in the in the UK area as well and you have a TV license, do check out Doctor's Kitchen, Thrifty Cooking in the Doctor's Kitchen. Um, it's on our player, they're all free recipes. You can check them out on my website as well. It's one of my favorite things that I've ever done actually because um, the recipes are so cheap and accessible. Uh, we got the average down to 90p a portion. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's just been kind of phenomenal to, to see how that's, we are able to achieve that and the, the team behind the scenes were incredible too so yeah uh thank you so much for reminding me vicky i appreciate it uh made the overnight oats last night brilliant um great i mean that's that's amazing i mean so, sorry oh yes i think it's my new roots thank you tracy for that i think it's my new roots life-changing bread i think that's the one um uh, brilliant all right let's check and see how we are going with this oh Beautiful. This is down here. Someone was asking about how I deal with lids and the little condensation group of water. So luckily this has got a little rim on it. So when you take it off, it doesn't drip anywhere. And if you rest it down like that, it doesn't drip anywhere. But I agree with that person, it's kind of annoying. So I kind of catch it like this and I tip it into the, into the sink and then I put it down inside so it doesn't drip everywhere. That's the, one of my hacks. But yeah, I'm, I'm so glad some, someone else had that issue beyond me because it does annoy me as well. Um, this is the, uh, the Russell Hanu chickpea stew as it is at the moment. You saw how easy that was. All I'm going to do is to make it a little bit more Instagram friendly, a little uh, chiffonade or roughly chop of uh, the coriander here. And what I would do before serving is drizzle mix in the coriander a little bit if you wanted to go a little bit further you could marble a little bit of um, plant-based yogurt or regular full-fat yogurt into this to make it look really jazzy and then drizzle a tiny bit of 
extra virgin olive oil with your thumb over the top over here. And then if you are using the plant-based yogurt, a tiny pinch of the raw spice, just a tiny bit, just to give that hit of the cinnamon. That's how you make delicious, healthy food that is such a delight to look at as well as taste and enjoy. So those two little kind of foodie, food styly tips of what I would recommend. But the core of this recipe is health and health benefits. You're looking after your gut, you're getting variety of ingredients, you are getting such incredible flavors from the spices, but also you're increasing the nutrient profile of your dish because of the said spices as well. So I really hope you enjoy this. It's so simple, five ingredients, three, two, one approach. Um, and yeah, yeah, thanks so much for, for joining in and, and giving your comment. I'm so sorry I can't get through to all the comments at the moment, but I, I do appreciate that. Erica says, thanks for all the information. Um, Angela's asking me about Saturday Kitchen this weekend. I'm not sure, hopefully, fingers crossed, I will be on. I was meant to be on last week, but we had uh, some issues. So yeah, we, we will see, TBD. Um, Thanks so much, uh, so, so much Lisa, uh, appreciate it. Yeah, I really enjoy doing the live cooking as well. It's, uh, it's, it's, a, a really, it's a pleasure for me to be able to teach so many people all at once the, the basics of, of how to eat well. Um, so yeah, so uh, please do continue to watch. Please share this as well. If you wanna, you wanna help spread the message, then just click the share button on the Facebook feed or whatever, and then share it to your friends and family. Copy the link, put it into your WhatsApp groups so people can see it afterwards. All the recipes and all the video stuff is going to be on my YouTube channel, so you can subscribe to that. And then we'll try and do some more lives in February. But this is my penultimate live. Tomorrow I'm doing a very simple um, pesto pasta, one of my favorite things to have at the end of a shift. Actually, it's one of the, my kind of go-tos. So do check that out as well. Um, and that'll be my last cooking for January. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks so much. Remember, 321 formula. If you want the book, go get the book. But otherwise, just remember the 321 formula. Everything you do, think about three portions of fruit, vegetables, two servings, one pan. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Have a good evening, whatever you guys are doing. And do check out the BBC, um, the BBC uh, show as well. Take care guys, see ya!